Hi everyone! I'm Danielle Ballantyne, Managing Editor of Forward Reviews, and you're watching another one of our new segments, Pity Forwards, bite-sized interviews with indie authors. Today, we're talking with Andre Alexis about his latest novel, Ring, which completes his quincunx cycle. And this novel focuses on Gwen, who is the latest in a long line of women who, upon falling in love, are gifted with a family heirloom, a magical ring that allows them to change three things about their beloved. Okay, so diving in, uh, I definitely had to Google what a quincunx is, and then I had to hit the little speaker button to make sure I could say it correctly for this interview. And for all those reasons and more, I am sure that you are much more adept at explaining it than I am. So can you just tell us briefly what a quincunx is, and then talk a bit about what drew you to use that as sort of the scaffolding for this series of yours? Okay, so a quincunx very simply is an arrangement of items or objects or whatever. When you look at the five on the set of the dice, you'll see four dots in the, are on the corners and one in the middle. That arrangement is called a quincunx. And it's commonly in gardens, like a pattern of uh, quincunxes together, where you have one, 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 one in the middle, and then it goes on. It's also like... Uh, I think there's a there's a there is a word that's escaping me that uh, uh, compares it to a net. It's sort of like how a, the fabric of a net goes. The reason that I was interested in it is I happened to read a um, a book by uh, I, I happen to be obsessed with the letter the number five and seven and eight and one. I don't know. They just get. And uh, so I was thinking of five anyway. But when I thought about uh, when I was reading a, a, uh, an essay by um, I don't know why I guess my mind is I'm distracted. Thomas, um, oh help me out. He did uh, religio medici, um, gardens of Cyrus. Uh, <laughs> he's a uh, he's a kind of Elizabethan author. Brown, Thomas Brown, B-R-O-W-N-E. Okay. There's a kind of Elizabethan later Elizabethan author. wrote an article called, really interesting, is it called Gardens of Cyrus, where he was looking at that shape, its origin. There's theorizing that when God planted um, the plants in Eden, for instance, they were in the shape of a quincunx, and that that's how the gardens would have been planted. It's sort of tied this um, garden and and geometry to the notion of God in a really interesting way. So I loved having that aspect of it, and I could play with uh, I could play with the kind of sacredness of that arrangement and with the number five and with the notion of God. So it was fun to do that. But I the hard part was I needed uh, a, a thing in the middle which was, in my mind, the third book, which I had to write last so that I could know what all the elements around it were so that it could encompass all those elements. It sounds really boring to say, but it was fun to do. <laughs> yeah, and that's, the, that's something that I, I was curious about reading it because this one is the last published and the last written, but yeah. you put it in the center or third, yeah. but you know, yeah. in the arrangement, it's in the center. And yeah. there was something sort of, cause you do, and we'll get to this, it's, it's my next question, but about the different themes that you've focused them around. And this one is centered around love. And okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in right there. Cause Absolutely. there's a strange misconception that each of the five books each deals with one theme, which isn't the case. I dealt with a bunch of themes, a similar set of themes, love, hate, power, place, um, God. And I dealt with all of those themes in all of them. But I felt that like the idea of God, for instance, is different when you're reading a mystery, which is hidden keys. And it's different when you're reading a vaguely Harlequin romancy thing, which is ring. And it's different again when you're doing a, a pastoral. Oh, man. <laughs> This is how Live TV. <laughs> this is like DoorDash. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, all of the books deal with a set of a number of themes, but the circumstances, the um, the the way that the genre changes, also kind of changes how you approach God or love or so on. You know. 
So that was fun. So it's very much an exploration yeah. of genre as well. All five. And I, 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 I sort of knew that you would, this one was sort of more of the romance category than maybe any of the others, but I, I felt reading Ring that Place had a huge part in it. Um, oh, yeah. As far as the other themes, that felt very significant um, for me. Oh, I'm just scanning through my questions. Um, no, no, so what, okay, my daughter is making noise. You're fine. Um, what was sort of, does it change your writing process at all, sort of going through, like, how did you approach arriving at Ring, which you intend to be the center, but you're writing it last? I mean, is there anything that you've, like, maybe wished you could go back and change now oh, that you've written it? I be able to because I'm going to rewrite everything uh, <laughs> now that Ring is done. I'm going to start from the start and rewrite all of the novels so that they're a little bit more in mm -hmm. terms of, like, for instance, in 15 Dogs, there was things that I wanted to do that I didn't do that I now get to write, like, add a little bit or take off something from other places. The, the whole point is that the five novels represent a unity and I'll rewrite so that that unity is clearer and clearer. Mm. So on that note, I, I remember there was some material that came along with, with the manuscript that I have the benefit of, but a lot of other people won't, but mm. they can be read in any order. Um, but that would sort of change the experience. Can you just speak to that a little bit, maybe how that unity will shift depending on the order in which you read them. Absolutely. So if you read them in order, which I'm never going to be able to do because I, I like my ideal reader would be going one, two, three, not the ideal, but the kind of normal one, two, three, four, five. And if you read them in that order, you'll read one and two, there'll be a pastoral and then there'll be an epilogue with the dogs. And then you'll read three, which talks about somebody that's in the first novel and talks about something that's in the second novel. And then we'll talk about someone who is in the fourth novel, who is in the fifth novel. So the third one has is sort of like a Janus face, you know, um, looking backwards and forwards at the same time. But I really wanted it to be like, you know, if you're walking around a bunch of things in a garden. So, excuse me, if you started with the fifth one, you would encounter a character. And then if you read the third one later, you would encounter that character again and characters from the different things. And you would encounter them in different times and at different moments, depending on how you read your way through it. So it's quite possible that the richest way through it is different than one, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's more interesting if you go five, one, four, three, two, you know? Um, and save, say, 15 dogs for last. I don't know. I'm intrigued because um, I think you'll have a different sense of what the experience of the five novels is, depending on where you come in and where you go, you go out. And of course, they're each written so that they're self-contained. You don't have to know the others to read the one that you're reading. So I'm just intrigued by the idea that somebody um, may read it in a way that is much richer than I conceived it. Yeah, I like that sort of analogy of maybe like walking backwards yeah. through a garden. Like you see yeah. all the same things, but yeah. maybe not the way it was intended, but that's not exactly wrong. No, it's not wrong at all. Um, and even when I do, I mean, I think this is where there's a little bit of a kind of mm in my mind. Now that there are five separate novels, you do get to read them any way that you want. You can read them in the published order. You can read them in the order in which your friends hand them to you. There's all sorts of ways. But when I do the final version, will be in order, one, two, three, four, five. And you'll be less likely to skip around, which is sad a little bit. But you know what I mean? It gives, it's the, it's the sort of official order. But like you say, it's the official order of a garden. And we don't encounter gardens the way their designers necessarily want us to. Mm -hmm. So part of this um, this magical ring that, that Gwen is given, as you know, is part of the trope of the three wishes is that you do yes. have to be careful what you wish for. Um, and the ring does demand a sacrifice for its use. 
And that's that's one of the many reasons that Gwen sort of struggles with with whether or not she should use it at all. Um, yes. And then digs in deeper as to, well, then what do I wish for? Understanding that everything's going to have a drawback. Um, understanding all of that, did, did you give any thought writing it as to whether you would use this or what you would sacrifice or did, did it, did that just go through your head at all about how you would react in that situation? Of course, because I had to, I mean, I had to react more or less as I thought Gwen would react. And um, she's not me, but she's, she has some of my kind of curiosity about the world. She's different than me in that she has a bit of an obligation. That ring has been passed on since before writing was invented. This was something that is in her family that is something to do with the sacred. Whether she believes in the sacred or not, there is just in its long history a kind of weight to it that I can't imagine. And I think in the end, she does succumb to that weight and uses it because she is part of a tradition. If it were just up to me and you sort of gave me the ring and said, oh, you can change three, three things about Elaine. Uh, Elaine is my partner. There's no way that I would change anything. Um, <laughs> not because I would be punished or that I would have to give something up, but because there is no other version of that person that I can imagine liking more, you know? So it would be useless for me. But when you combine it with the sense of the sacred, when you combine it with the tradition, when you sort of think as Gwen, I think, arrives at that it is your duty to pass this on, whether you believe in it or not, then it becomes different. Then it also becomes about being cautious, about changing things that won't be fatal, um, that won't ruin, you know, the person that you, that you love. Although the ring compensates, not so much to take something from you, but because the object is the ring is guiding um, the relationship. And in a way, it's, as, it's a book about relationships more than it is people um, who are in love and who are in relationship. And some of those relationships seem very peculiar. But in the case of um, the, the obvious one, Robbie and Nadia, <laughs> they're crazy, but crazy in ways that work for them together. And that's kind of the thing. The balance is not about you and your power. It is about the relationship and how the relationship works. Yeah, well, that's that's all I have. Um, so do you, I'm just gonna throw it out to you if you have anything you wanna say, any announcements, no. um, any like dates from we can expect this Anywhere, maybe? sorry? Any like that? dates, you have like publication dates or book signing, yeah. anything you want to throw out. <laughs> it's next week. The publication, the official publication date in Canada is next week. And I think it might be a couple of weeks later in the States, but in Canada, it's the 28th. And I'm, it feels weird having <laughs> been writing all of these novels since 2009 to be done mm. like 12 years later and uh, moving on to something else. I've already moved on to something else and it just feels a little bit like something essential in my life has changed, mm. you know? It's a little odd. Yeah, I guess well, I'll leave it at, it's a little odd and the book is a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little odd, but onward and upward. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Andre. Thank you, Daniel. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to whatever you're doing next. Talk to you later. <laughs>